Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, let it not be said that I am not someone who will admit when he is wrong. As it turns out, Dragon Age Veilguard is set to be the greatest Bioware game ever. Because according to the reviews for Dragon Age The Veilguard, we are about to play a CRPG that puts Mass Effect, KOTOR, and Baldur's Gate to shame. And let me tell you, I have never been so unable to do a YouTube intro with a straight face before. So we've got two issues that are at play at the moment regarding Dragon Age The Veilguard. One is about review copies for the game that were, or in this case, weren't sent out to different YouTubers. We've had a video from Flexter Life talking about how they suspect but can't confirm that they weren't sent a review copy of the game because of their lukewarm response to their initial playthrough. Also, YouTuber Luke Stevens, who is probably one of the biggest YouTubers in this space, didn't receive a review copy after being lukewarm on his initial video on the Veil Guard. Now, as of the recording of this video, we don't know anything for certain about the circumstances surrounding this, and honestly, we probably never will. But it does follow a pattern that I've been critical of about this game, of them love bombing YouTubers on one hand, and then working as hard as possible to quote unquote, bait the bigots on the other hand, to generate publicity both positive and negative for the game. I mean, I can't criticize them, they are playing the internet game very, very well at the moment, but sending, not sending Luke Stevens a review copy is just weird. He's a huge YouTuber, I'm a bit sus involving that, but really, that's all I can say for now. But that's not the thing I'm the most sus about. Now, while not sending out review copies to a YouTuber as big as Luke Stevens or a media empire as big as Fextra Life is a little bit weird for a Bioware RPG. But that's not nearly as weird to me as the reviews we're seeing from major outlets about the game. To say that the reviews are effusious with their praise of Dragon Age Veilguard almost underscores the tone. Let me read a little bit from some of the reviews for you. So we have the ever lovely Eurogamer coming in here with Dragon Age The Veilguard Review, the best Bioware game I've ever played. How about that? So before we go any further, just from the intro of that review, it's really important to point out that there is a huge cultural undertone to a lot of these reviews of mainstream journalists sort of going, ha ah, you lose bigots, the game is amazing. Which immediately kind of removes some of the journalistic credibility of these outlets. But even that on its own doesn't explain the full weirdness at work here. Like, listen to the intro of this article. There are moments in Dragon Age the Veil Guard where all I can do is stop and gape to see a fantasy adventure brought to life around me at such scale and with such drama is astounding. I keep expecting the illusion to falter and for the game to tire, but it never does. Always the ante is upped and the centerpiece grows. I gape, I hold my breath. I have never been on a Bioware ride like this. This is weird. Another review that I absolutely love is IGN saying that the game is so much better than Dragon Age Inquisition, which was merely an all right game in hindsight. Now, why do they include hindsight? Because they actually gave a nine out of 10 review to Dragon Age Inquisition. These, they have no shame. They have no shame. And I suspect that some of the absolutely hyperbolic praise from the game from some of the most kind of, let's call them insider media outlets, kind of comes from a place of cultural contention with the gamers that they know won't like the game. Because the more mainstream journalistic outlets that don't necessarily have a huge foot in the gaming sphere have very different reviews. Looking at The Guardian, The Dragon Age Veilguard, a good RPG, but an underwhelming Dragon Age game, three out of five stars. Now, The Guardian is by no means bashing the game because they think it's woke. The Guardian is a very left-wing newspaper. The Guardian can just play a mediocre RPG and go, okay, mediocre RPG. Why? Because they don't have the sort of industry ties that a company like IGN, Eurogamer, PC Gamer, or others do. I'm not I'm just saying it's very, very weird that these huge PC game review industry insiders are giving the game the most insane praise I've ever seen a game receive in my life. Meanwhile, even mainstream journalistic outputs like The Guardian are like, huh? 
It's a mediocre game. And people that have reviewed it, like Luke Stevens and Fextra Life, whatever you think about their YouTube channels, are like, oh, it's a mediocre game. Now, there's also an undertone of cultural politics, but like I said with The Guardian, if it was just an undertone of cultural politics, albeit that there is some of that going on, The Guardian would certainly be taking part, but it's not because it still feels the need to call a mediocre RPG a mediocre RPG. And the consensus from smaller outlets on Metacritic seems to be the same, with the game having a Metacritic score as of recording of this video pretty similar to that of Dragon Age Inquisition, which, in my opinion, is the worst game Bioware have ever made before they made Anthem and before they made Mass Effect Andromeda. So in that sense, it's basically a return to form, only the form was bad. Now, I could be entirely wrong, and maybe this is just turns out to be a kind of love it or leave it style of game, but generally with the big Bioware RPGs, that's rarely the case. I mean, we can all agree that Dragon Age Origins is probably the best one of the series. We all agree that Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 were probably the best of their early CRPGs. We all agree that of the Mass Effect trilogy, Mass Effect 2 was probably the best. That just tends to be the consensus. Why? Because one of the things about RPGs is they're a bit like stories, and because they have this highly narrative aspect to them, it tends to be like books in a series where people kind of coalesce around thinking that one or that aspect or that film was the best in the same way with CRPGs. So I would be very suspicious if it turns out to be that people just have varying different opinions on Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Especially when before the review copies got into the hands of mainstream journalistic outputs, the things I was hearing from the YouTube reviewing channels were almost always 7 out of 10 was their sort of preliminary rating. I mean, they, obviously, they're not going to give a rating before the game is out, but that seemed to be the vibe that they were exuding in there. Personally, I won't be playing the game. I suspect it will eventually come to Xbox Game Pass because of the deal that uh, Xbox Game Pass and EA have. And you know, all the other Dragon Age games are on Game Pass at the moment, so I expect eventually it will follow, but I won't be playing it on release. I have too many other games to play for this channel, and I'm also going to start streaming over on Twitch TV, which I'll leave in the description below if you want to come hang out over there. All in all, I think this is a really interesting story, and it's an example of something that I want to talk about more in the gaming space, and that is what I'll call the cultural bifurcation of gaming. You can see people everywhere in the gaming space shouting about the horrible woke mob. You can see people in the gaming space shouting everywhere about the horrible anti-woke mob. But one of the things that underlies this, that doesn't have anything to do with diversity and inclusion or anti-woke or politics, is just a cultural shift, a bifurcation, a tearing apart into two of the gaming base, of the gaming culture. We're seeing a lot of more left-wing people from the literati and cultural left moving into positions in AAA studios as producers, as narrative designers. You know, the sort of hoity-toity people of the world. And then there's the older, long-haired, beer belly gamers who want a big shirtless man with an axe and a girl with big boobies. And the, the shift in culture between what gaming was and what the kind of gaming elites have become, especially in the journalistic, especially in the narrative design circles, is really interesting because back in the day, Games were made by the gaming base. Lord British and Peter Molyneux and even Peter Molyneux were still as part, uh, as much a part of gaming culture as the games that they were making the gamers for. And one of the things we're seeing is the same kind of cultural elite that existed in stuff like Hollywood or certainly in the literary or theater world start to enter into games. Uh, and I think that's all I've really got for this video. If you want to follow me over on Twitch, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch. Uh, go there if you have Twitch. And I will see you all in the next video. Until then, peace out, guys.